Hi there. In this video we'll be taking a look at this REFOS Smart Energy Monitor, model EM06. This has uh, six current transformers in it, so that means it can monitor six individual wires and give you six individual reports. Little bit more info, so it works uh, from 100 to 240 volt, basically all over the world in this case. And we are greeted with the unit itself. I will show you uh, a standard uh, fuse uh, to compare the, the size of this uh, next to it. Little cute Wi-Fi antenna, <laughs> I like this. A little bit more info right here. It has this uh, lock, I think. Yeah, it unlocks like this and then you lock it uh, back onto the rail or whatever that uh, is actually called. And the six current transformers. If I could actually get them out of here, they are quite uh, nicely packed. So rated 120, maximum 150 amps. Okay, quite accurate, 1%. Okay, that's nice. And this is what goes onto the wire itself. Let's see, has a clip right here, open it. Oh. I just noticed, I think it has a sort of spring. Yeah, it's spring loaded. You see? That makes sure there will always be a good contact between this and the top part. Presumably that helps a lot. Uh, I'm thinking that would be my logic with the um, um, accuracy of, of these things. Well, Next, quite a hefty manual. They give uh, us a warning in here. Uh, be really careful about electric shock. Of course, do not work on your uh, fuse panel uh, unless the main fuse is off, so everything is de-energized. And it's recommended to have an electrician, a professional, uh, um, to install this. A bit more uh, info about this. Do not use it in humid environments. If you need help, you can contact them. This, if you need to scan it to get the app itself. This is how to prepare again for installation. Turn off main breaker. Plug in the power harness. And yes, about this, the colors. Let me see. I think we have here the harness. Yes, we do have here the harness because something is heavy and here it is. So this is the main harness. This will be connected depending on um, how many phases you have. For me is a single phase for the whole house. So for me, I will basically have a neutral and all these three will be in a single place. If you have two phase or three phase, then you need to make sure, for example, B, B1 uh, will work on the same phase as this wire will be connected. Because this is reading current, this will read voltage. You will not have a perfectly identical voltage on all three phases. So that means that the power will not be calculated properly. The data will not be gathered properly unless these two are on the same uh, phase. So be careful about that. But for me, having a single phase, everything can be connected uh, anywhere and these three will be together. But we'll see about that just a tiny bit uh, later. Exactly right here. So I'm in this situation. You could have two phase or three phase. Installation of uh, the current transformers. 
what uh, the blinking led which is most likely this one what it means if you ever need to reset it press on these five seconds and release it and it will reset i like does this also rotate no it does not rotate but it can be straightened if needed yeah here the button function specifications again frequency and some questions and a really cute uh, typo <laughs> warranty <laughs> instead of warranty and i promised you i will show you the size of it this is a standard fuse at least in europe this is what you find in most countries so this is basically more or less the same size it will lock on the same uh, DIN type of rails as a standard fuse a bit wider but not by much it's not as wide as uh, a double fuse for example just a bit wider than uh, one of these uh, narrow ones getting ready to remove the cover from this fuse panel uh, obviously the main fuse of the house is off at this moment so there's absolutely no electricity in here okay so i had a bit of fun identifying all the fuses that i want to i don't know to monitor and uh, now let me see how i can gather a few wires because for example these are the lights for the whole house and i want to monitor all four of them together with one monitor and uh, i think here these two are the oven in the kitchen and these are the rest of the sockets so these two will go together again and some of the others i, I will see if i have long enough wires to be able to put them uh, in a single uh, clamp which i want to monitor together obviously and which not uh, those for sure i can simply connect at the moment this is a red nest i will straighten everything up uh, connected this to its rail then obviously locked the top um, locking mechanism power is plugged into here and the wire is coming right here i cut this a bit shorter and put them in ferrules all three colored wires are in a single place on uh, on phase and the white one is on neutral because again i only have one phase in this uh, panel right here and i will connect it uh, in this fuse right here with its uh, the fuse's original wires okay now everything is in place yes this panel is still really full i think it's about 80 percent occupied in terms of how many fuses you can put in here so bigger one should be installed most likely it will be uh, if we ever need to add anything and also it looks even fuller than uh, it is because basically the electrician that installed it used wires to go from one fuse to the other instead of those really slim uh, dedicated uh, i don't know, strips for lack of a better word so yeah and all the other wires he left quite long but luckily in here all the light uh, uh, live wires i was able to go uh, through them uh, with them through this uh, uh, current clamp so yeah i guess he he left a bunch of long wires but it also helped me in this case so yeah everything is tucked in here and if i, I would uh, have any recommendation maybe have some clamps like this a little bit smaller smaller for the european market where we are dealing with way smaller currents so the wires are no way near as thick because uh, yeah we have higher voltage so higher voltage lower current needed and it would be easier to integrate them but even in in this uh, yeah i could do it so yeah next step put the power back on and i just want to mention everything below this level basically the top of these things is fair gain all of that is unused space in this panel so all of this will not be pushing against anything and everything is on we have slow blinking right here uh, from this point on no touchy touch in here until i connect uh, to the app and this will connect to the network and after i make sure that everything is working as it should then i will again disconnect the power the mains and uh, put back the cover have one last look to make sure everything is okay
to download the app, you either scan the QR code from the manual or you search uh, on Google Play for Refos and install it. At this point, I will basically create a user for myself. Okay, and now, I don't know, home? No, I think home. Maybe I should grant access to nearby devices. Okay. Hopefully that's still in connecting mode. Yep, it is. Look here. Nice. Add. This part is being done by Bluetooth. Okay, so at this step, let me see, reselect Wi-Fi. Okay, and now I can select the Wi-Fi that I want. Password inserted, next. And hopefully now it will connect to the Wi-Fi. And it's done. Nice. Look it, here. And... How do we refresh it? Will it refresh by itself? How does this work? <laughs> I have absolutely no clue. The LED is now, I'm looking at it, it's always green. Uh, okay. Oopsie. So one of the clamps is actually backwards. All of them are backwards. But mm, I thought I understood correctly the direction that they need to be put in, but it seems I did not. What was coming out of the fuse I thought should follow this, so the life should go in this direction. Well, it seems it needs to be reversed, so yeah. Anyway, easy to do. I recommend you test with one of them, don't connect all of them, just test with one, see how it is in your particular situation after you are connecting to the app and everything is working connect all other uh, just so you don't need to rotate them like me now we're talking top clamps all of them are with one all of bottom ones are with two and uh, redone the i don't know cable ties before closing it i removed part of the plastic to make room for the antenna and it's finally closed and now I can flip the outside breaker and we are good to go and I have started to rename a few of these things in home we have here smart energy monitor and then we can come here device name change it to whatever we want and in here for example this is my office. Oh, <clears throat> if I would actually know how to write office room. <laughs> and now you can change, uh, you can see it changed right here. But uh, yeah, you can learn a lot about what you are using and where by seeing something like this. And also how efficient they are. For example, here the power factor is really freaking bad 0.08. Normally you want uh, to be as close to one as possible. Just want to mention the LED is not intrusive at all at night. It's just a little green LED. Already starting to use the app to monitor uh, stuff. And for example, yesterday evening I saw something interesting in the bathrooms. This is normal, for example, this is water heater, this spike right here and uh, these little spikes which are about uh, every 10 minutes more or less maybe 30 minutes or something like that so what's up with those well I figured out it was actually the dehumidifier which was starting over and over and over the humidity was right at the threshold level and this being a digital a sensor dehumidifier it has this stupid behavior where it just powers on really quickly dehumidifies just a tiny bit and then cuts off once again and how did i do that hey if i long press it it will show me how what the power usage was awesome 
I was actually wondering how this can be done. <laughs> so if you long press on this curve, it will show you the power usage. That's freaking awesome. Okay. I knew I could see it in uh, in day, for example, but I didn't find it until now because here you need to actually long press it and be right above the curve. <laughs> okay. So shut that thing off and over the night yeah the water heater started again once and stuff like that but no issues whatsoever just the average i think this i'm expecting this to be uh, 33 watt hmm 33 watt hey i know what is yeah 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 I have I have something plugged in that's that's always running also so yeah makes sense and for example in the living room this is normal uh, standby uh, consumption of all of the plug-in devices about 10 watts and in the morning the air purifier uh, also started and uh, it, this should be made just a tiny bit easier it's quite hard to, to press on this and that uh, air purifier uses about 5 watts. And you can see right about here when it uh, actually powered on at about 7.30 more or less. But you can see here where we were watching TV. Uh, yeah, quite high power usage. And then we went away from the living room. <laughs> really nice to, to get such uh, detailed views of your electricity consumption. And you can also really nicely see how much the lights were used. So basically here we started turning stuff on. And as the night came, more and more stuff was on until we basically went to bed. And about here everything stays nicely put. And for the heating, for example here during the night, the the central heating uh, went on this is uh, on consumption and this the pump for the in-floor heating also kicked in so until here uh, there was not enough heat in the the pipe going to the floor heating to allow the pump to run it had no reason to run that soon until the whole uh, installation wasn't hot then this kicked in then this went off at a point in time and this pump uh, for the in-floor heating was here all by itself. So about 30 watts. And then that shot, shut off also. So this is something that I like because it means after the original uh, water uh, or house heater, uh, gas powered furnace, how to call it, is running, uh, this pump doesn't remain on maybe two or three minutes after the the heater shuts off so i don't have this pump ever running if there's no uh, hot water in it and in the kitchen for example is if we switch today to the this is what's happening now today so i did heat up uh, some food and uh, if we su switch to yesterday or even to the day before but this is when i actually installed it so I don't have the full day in here, but to yesterday, you can clearly see when my wife was uh, cooking. <laughs> it's really nice and you can see exactly how much power was used uh, for, for that cooking. And that's about it. This is a really nice device that can help you make sense really well of what's happening on your electrical network. Uh, it can even calculate costs if you want. Uh, or just keep an eye on any, I don't know, uh, ghost uh, power usage from, from some device that uh, switches on when it shouldn't or stuff like that. So yeah, thank you Rifos for sending this uh, unit in. It's being put to good use. And as always, see you in the next video. Bye.